us continue our discussion of polymeric materials. Uh, in this week, uh, we are looking at properties of a single macromolecule and uh, we have already seen example of how single macromolecule uh, size and uh, its flexibility and its shape uh, can give us very good uh, insights about uh, even the bulk behavior. Uh, one important aspect of a single macromolecule uh, is the charges on it. And uh, we have already uh, discussed uh, polyelectrolytes, uh, polymer electrolytes. And uh, so, in this lecture, we will look at uh, polyelectrolytes uh, from their applications point of view. And uh, we will do this uh, by first uh, looking at uh, several examples of uh, polymeric systems which contain ions. And uh, then we will pick up one specific example. Uh, uh, many of you may be familiar with fuel cell. Uh, we will look at uh, example of a fuel cell membrane where uh, proton conduction uh, is done, which is an electrolytic activity using a polymeric membrane. So, uh, looking at uh, what's an electrolyte. Electrolyte uh, is a system which can uh, conduct ions. And uh, we know that electrolytes are used in uh, cells and batteries. Uh, cells and batteries are a combination of electrodes and electrolytes. Electrodes is where uh, conversion between uh, uh, electrons and ions happens or electrochemical reactions take place. And uh, electrolyte is uh, the uh, communicating channel between the two electrodes, the cathode and anode. So therefore, electrolytes are uh, generally uh, uh, liquid materials. Uh, we are quite used to examples such as sulfuric acid in lead acid battery. Or of course, uh, we know that any salt solution uh, is also an ionically conducting medium. So uh, all these can be used, uh, liquid-like systems can be used as electrolytes. Uh, electrolytes can also be solid uh, ionic conductors. Uh, we have uh, ceramic uh, solid ionic conductors. Uh, we have uh, uh, systems uh, where uh, the state is solid, but ions can conduct. So, in all of these uh, liquid uh, or uh, solid system, uh, ions presence and uh, dissociated ions presence is required. These are the ones which can uh, diffuse or migrate or conduct. And uh, in case of uh, most of the electrolytes that we know, they are either atomic systems or molecular systems. In case of uh, polymers, what we are uh, looking at is macromolecules with charged groups or ionic groups. And uh, these ionic groups can dissociate once a suitable solvent is present. Uh, here, uh, I just uh, wanted you to uh, look at uh, the term polarity of a solvent. Later on, uh, when we discuss about uh, suitability of a solvent for a polymer, uh, whether a polymer dissolves in a solvent or not, and uh, how the interactions are between solvent and the polymer, uh, this uh, term polarity uh, will be quite useful. So, generally, uh, polar solvents uh, are uh, uh, required for uh, dissociation of ions. So, water is uh, the most uh, common solvent that we know, but it need not be water alone. Uh, there are uh, uh, other solvents uh, uh, and I, I want you to go and look up uh, some of these and uh, these are some examples of other polar solvents. And uh, what's meant by polarity? And uh, clearly that will indicate presence of dipoles. So, and if polymeric uh, systems, macromolecules also contain certain groups, which can interact with solvent, then uh, interactions is possible. In case of polyelectrolytes, there are ionic species present and they clearly will interact with uh, polar, polar solvents. So, general terms which are used uh, to describe these uh, polymers with uh, electrolytic uh, properties are polyelectrolytes, polymer which are electrolytes. We also use polymers which contain ionic groups, therefore ionic polymers. And of course, uh, since we have uh, uh, positive or negative ions, uh, we can have cationic polymers or anionic polymers. And uh, we have uh, uh, anionic polymers uh, and cationic polymers as very useful uh, in uh, water treatment or, or, or in uh, uh, separation uh, of molecules 
many of these ion exchange resins, we, we have these, depending on what is the ion, that is the target. Uh, sometimes we also will refer to them as gels, uh, meaning that they have solid-like properties, but they contain a lot of uh, water uh, usually in them. So uh, we, we also have, of course, large examples of natural uh, polyelectrolytes. In fact, uh, biology is full of uh, examples where uh, ionic interactions are very crucial to the function of the macromolecules. And so whether it's nucleic acids or uh, proteins or uh, whether uh, pectins or uh, other examples of uh, polysaccharides, they all are, uh, they all contain ionic groups and uh, they are all uh, polyelectrolytes. So we'll spend some time uh, in the lecture on uh, structure of biopolymers looking at some of these polyelectrolytes which are natural. Now, uh, even though uh, polyelectrolyte is a generic term and sometimes it is used for those polymers which actually along the chain do not contain an ion. So uh, this example I have given earlier also where we looked at uh, uh, polyacrylic acid. So if you recall, CH2CH and uh, if uh, we were to draw this as a chain then uh, we can uh, say and uh, there are many places where this COO group is there and this can dissociate into COO and H plus. So I will draw polyacrylic acid by indicating that there are a lot of uh, dissociated uh, COOH groups. So this is how uh, macromolecule itself contains ions. But we have several examples of polymeric systems where charges are not part of the macromolecule. And uh, one example of that is uh, lithium polymer battery, which is by the way the most common example of an application of a polymer electrolyte in a, a battery, in a practical application. And here the polymer is polyethylene oxide, uh, which is uh, nothing but, as the name suggests, ethylene oxide repeating units. So you can see there is no ionic group uh, along this chain. So how is it that uh, this can be an electrolyte? This becomes electrolyte because we actually add a salt along with this polymer. And uh, this salt can dissociate And then uh, you can have uh, these uh, lithium ions conducting. And why is polyethylene oxide used along with uh, this lithium salt? What is so specific to polyethylene oxide that makes it suitable to be used with these uh, lithium-based salts? So lithium-based salts are required from a lithium battery point of view. So we already know lithium battery is uh, quite commonly used. and. Uh, uh, earlier lithium ion batteries contain inorganic electrolytes. So when we are trying to replace it with a polymer electrolyte, clearly we know that uh, lithium ions will be required. Now what is specific about polyethylene oxide that makes it suitable? And here the crucial aspect is this oxygen group and interaction with lithium. So in fact, if you look at uh, polyethylene oxide, what you have is uh, the chains of uh, polyethylene oxide which contain uh, all these oxygen along the chain and uh, the lithium ion actually interacts with these. So in fact polyethylene network, polyethylene oxide network is like a mesh in which these lithium ions are getting tossed around. And so the conductivity in such a network where because of the movement of the macromolecular segment, lithium ion also gets, uh, starts hopping around from one place to the other, the conductivity is high. So that's the basis for using polyethylene oxide, though it doesn't have an ion itself in a lithium ion battery. We similarly have examples of uh, materials where uh, we will uh, use PEG and uh, just to remind you that PEG and PEO are one and the same thing, polyethylene glycol or polyethylene oxide. So the same molecule is also used by making a gel out of it and in which case there is a lot of water because again the same role of oxygen where we have these polymer chains and uh, they may be cross-linked physically or chemically and then there is a lot of water present. 
70, 80%, 90% water present. And this uh, water is uh, added with ionic species. So this is like a sponge-like material in which water is contained. There is one small way in which analogy of sponge and this is misplaced. In this case, the mixture of uh, polymer and uh, phosphate buffer is molecular. Everywhere molecular mixing is there between the solvent and ions and the polymer chain. However, polymers themselves do not contain the ionic groups. One the last example is uh, where the sponge-like analogy is completely valid. And that is the case of porous ion. So in this case, uh, what we have is uh, uh, pores of, uh, uh, so, so polypropylene, which is a hydrophobic polymer, and but it has porous. So in the pores, there are KOH solution. So this is an analogy where sponge is there and uh, wherever there are pores of the sponge, there is KOH uh, solution filled. And in this case, the polymer is acting completely only to give mechanical rigidity to the system. Otherwise, the whole role is played only by the potassium hydroxide solution. So we've seen some examples. So sometimes people may refer to these things as polyelectrolyte, but they are not. They are not macromolecules which contain uh, uh, ionic groups. These are polymers which do play a role of electrolyte in a either cell or a battery system. Looking at where are all the places where polyelectrolytes are used. Uh, we will use polyelectrolytic systems or uh, macromolecular systems which, are, uh, which have ionic groups along them wherever we need ionic species, but we need benefits of macromolecules. So what are these benefits? We need ionic species conduction, but at the same time, we need benefits. And these benefits could be in terms of solid-like systems, as I've already mentioned. So no leakage and variety of uh, issues which are associated with uh, liquid systems, corrosion. So many of these things could be prevented if we use a solid-like material. But with a macromolecular system, we could bring in additional benefits in terms of flexibility, in terms of uh, easy uh, shapes that can be fabricated and so on. So any benefit that we have discussed so far with polymeric systems. And the examples here are plenty. Uh, fuel cell, uh, we use uh, the ionic polymer or a polyelectrolyte. Uh, there are lots of examples in robotics. So sensors, actuators, not just in robotics, but various other application, wherever we need electrochemomechanical. This is a very interesting term. We have electrical response, which means conduction is involved, conduction of ions, electrons, possibly. And we have chemo because we may change the pH, we may change the salt environment, we may change the temperature and the pressure and so on. And then mechanical, because there is deformation involved. So because of deformation, electrical or physicochemical properties may change, or because of electrical or physicochemical properties changing, mechanical response will be there. So these are nothing but sensors and actuators. Just like in our body, because of biochemical uh, reactions, uh, we can get either sensing or acting can happen, actuation can happen. And of course, uh, pharmaceutical and biomedical applications are important wherever drug delivery to a specific ionic environment is needed. Water treatment is an extremely important uh, area of polyelectrolytic usage because dissolved solids and uh, many other uh, salts which are there in water can interact with these polymeric systems and polymeric system can play a role of making an agglomerate of the dissolved solid by interacting with all these isolated salts and therefore leading to an effective separation of uh, dissolved solids from water. And one very common example is also related to diapers, sanitary napkins and other health related product where absorption of uh, aqueous uh, fluids is required. And in this case, uh, if we use a polymer which has uh, ionic groups, then the amount of water that can be absorbed is extremely high. So polysodium acrylate, for example, which is used in uh, many of these applications, it, it can absorb uh, up to eight times its own weight in terms of uh, the water. So a very high degree of swelling and water absorption is possible. So let's finish this lecture by looking at this example of fuel cell. 
So uh, I've just uh, put this uh, uh, graph of uh, the graphic of uh, fuel cell. Uh, you can just do some search and uh, try to read more about it. Uh, I will only focus on the uh, polyilmer electrolyte part, which is serving as a proton conducting medium. And uh, once we say proton conduction is needed, of course, we know sulfuric acid or any other acid can be used. So the key here is to get a polymer which has acid. And uh, immediate response, given so many times we have discussed, uh, may be that, you know, why don't we use polyacrylic acid? So this definitely can be used as an electrolyte. But the problem with this is as soon as you add it with water, it will dissolve. So some of the systems, uh, which are some of the issues which are there with liquid electrolytes will also be present with this. So we need a mechanically robust polymer, but at the same time, it should have acidic groups which can conduct ions. And so uh, one of the most stable polymers, if I ask you uh, what comes to your mind, what will it be? Very stable polymer. And uh, if you look at it from the point of view of uh, wherever there is corrosion problems, wherever uh, there is a, a lubrication required, wherever uh, there is a very good physical chemical stability required. In fact, in kitchen, when we use non-stick, where high temperatures and oil and water and different types of substances are involved, yes, I'm sure many of you have arrived at the answer that Teflon. So Teflon is an example of a very robust polymer and uh, it's a fluorinated uh, polymer. And so this can be uh, used in an electrolytic setting. So it will be resistant to oxidation reduction and any other uh, complications that are available in a fuel cell or a battery. But the problem is it doesn't have any ionic groups for conduction. So variety of uh, fluorinated uh, ionic polymers are there and all of these are called uh, sulfonated polymer because on these uh, Teflon backbone, what we have done is introduce an acidic group. So if you have a chain and at the end, you introduce what is called a sulfonic acid group. So you can have a group like this and you can also have the Teflon backbone. So what I have drawn here uh, are several examples, but the most common one is Nafion. Whenever we talk of ionic polymers and in applications in variety of uh, uh, fuel cell situations, but also in terms of sensors, actuators, wherever there is proton conduction required, this is an extremely important polymer. And uh, many new materials which are being tried to be developed over the last 20 years, the target is to say, can we get as good a performance as Nafion? And that's because uh, we have this uh, fluorinated uh, backbone because of which the dissociation of this is extremely efficient. So we get proton, which can then conduct. And so uh, this is a fascinating example. Uh, Nafion is a fascinating example of where we have uh, hydrophobic, hydrophilic part. Hydrophilic part is which is uh, associated with the SSO3H group. Hydrophobic part is the Teflon backbone. And uh, these are very interesting microstructure distribution. If we look at uh, nanometer and micrometer size uh, uh, description of this material, we will see that there are lots of islands and channels of these sulfonic acid groups and water. So with only 10 to 15 percent water, this polymer can conduct ions as good as a liquid sulfuric acid. And that's its advantage. So ionic conductivity is extremely high, but uh, from all other points of view, it gives us a perfect benefit of a solid-like material. There's something more to read about in term, in case you want to understand about uh, how sulfonated polymers are very interesting from a polymer science point of view. So with this, we will close this lecture. Thank you.